So to do anything on a blockchain, you have to send requests to a blockchain node or an external third party like Alchemy or Infura. Whether you're deploying a contract, calling a function, or aping into the new avalanche pool on the Aave protocol, you have to make some type of API call to some type of blockchain node. Now, if you're running your own node, you can sort of have at it, right? You can make as many API calls as you like, but if you're using a third party external blockchain node, then you might get rate limited, you might have to bump up your subscription, or you might just be waiting way too long for all your calls to return. For example, if I wanted to call 50 different view functions, I'd have to make 50 API calls. And in this video, we're gonna learn how to use multi-call to combine all of our read calls into a single API call to one of our nodes. And then at the end of this video, we'll do a quick NFTAD update. Let's get froggy. Now, if we wanna read data off the blockchain, the simplest way we can do that is just with single requests for every piece of data we want to read. For example, if I wanted to read latest price off a chain link price feed, I could make an API call to a blockchain saying, hey, get me that latest price feed. And if I wanted to do that across many price feeds, I would just make several API calls across several price feeds. The actual request that's being made behind the scenes looks something like this. Now, one step better is doing what's called batching your requests. So you can actually batch your API call requests into a single API call. This means it's the blockchain node that it has to kind of parse and go through all these requests and queue them and, and figure all that stuff out. Something like that might look like this. Now you'd think, oh, okay, cool. Well, let's just do everything like this. We can, that's perfect, right? Well, in practice, we found out these batching requests can be a little bit tricky for the nodes to actually work with, and some services don't even offer functionality for this. So maybe your external provider doesn't even offer batching requests. And if you make too many batch requests, your call could infinitely hang. So the most effective ways to read a ton of data off the blockchain is using what's called multi-call. Now multi-call goes back to making a single read request on chain but calling a very specific contract on chain. It makes a single request to a specific contract that has this multi-call functionality. For this demo, we're gonna be using the Uniswap multi-call contract. And the function that we're gonna be calling is this function called try aggregate. As input parameters, it actually takes what's called a call array. This is an array of contract calls for us to make. So we input an address and the function that we want to call and this single function call will loop through our list and return it to us. So we're actually making one function call to this function with just all of our calls as input parameters to this function call. And it's more efficient and it saves us API calls, which is nice. So let's look into actually using this though. We're gonna be doing a demo in Browning where we call the last 50 rounds of a Chainlink price feed update which normally would be a little bit tricky to get in a single API call. And for those of you who love JavaScript, I made a JavaScript example, so you can go check that out too. I'm not gonna be demoing in here, but there's a JavaScript example in the description as well. So let's jump into the code. So if you would just wanna go ahead and jump right in and get started, you can go grab git clone my multi-call repo, link in the description, my multi-call in JS. So we're gonna go ahead and do it from scratch so we can explain exactly what's going on. So to get started, we're gonna do a brownie init. We're gonna create our new brownie projects. Obviously, you gotta have brownie installed. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a little script arino called multicall.py. And this is gonna be our ground zero. This is gonna be the function that we want to do, right? So what are we trying to do? What do we want to do? Well, we want to call the last 50 rounds in a chain link price feed in one call. For those of you who don't know uh, what how Chainlink price feeds work, just a quick update. So here's a price feed, and uh, if we look at the price history, each one of these changes comes in a round, right? A round is when all the oracles uh, come together and they talk and they say, hey, the new price is this, right? So every time they make a price update, that is a round. So right, if I wanna get the historical data of a Chainlink price feed, Traditionally, I would have to make a ton of API calls, which obviously super sucks. So instead, we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be grabbing the, the last 50 price updates or, or rounds you know, with this multi-call. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, we can do that, grabbing the historical data here. So let's go ahead and get this started. So to start off any brownie script, we're gonna do def main at the start of our script. And the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get this price feed contract. So we're gonna say price feed equals contract dot from ABI. And this is how we're gonna define a new contract. And this from API, we need to give it a name, which I'm just gonna say feed. We need to give it an address. So if we go to do docs.chain.link, 
let's go down to Ethereum data feeds. We'll look for like FUSD, for example. Boom, we'll grab this as the address. Address. And then we need an ABI. I usually do ABIs by um, just using the, this interfaces here. So instead of like, I could, I could totally do like ABI equals and then like add the whole JSON stuff here, but I don't want to do that. Um, I prefer doing the interface route. So I have the aggregator v3 interface dot sol already. Um, but if you're looking for one of those interfaces, you can always go to the GitHub, the Chainlink GitHub, come in here, in contracts, SRC, whatever version, interfaces, and you can grab any interface right from here, right? So we're using the price feed interface, which is this aggregator v3 interface, and we're just literally copy pasting it uh, into our code here. Oh, this is version six, but yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. So um, in any case, price feed equals contract dot from ABI, and then we gotta do from, Brownie import contract to do that. And then we also need to give it uh, uh, that ABI. So we're gonna import the interfaces, interfaces. And we're gonna say interface dot aggregator v3 interface dot ABI. Great, and now we'll have a price seed contract on mainnet. So I, I am hard coding addresses and stuff, you know, bear with me as an example. So uh, now we're gonna say rounds is now uh, an array. And since we want um, the last 50 updates, the last 50 rounds, let's go ahead and get the latest round first. So we'll say latest round is gonna be price feed dot latest round data. Uh, and this returns um, an array or an object. So we're just gonna get the zeroth item, which I know has this latest round. Actually, we can even see it in the interface here. Go to latest round data. It returns one, two, it returns all these things. And we just want the round ID. So latest round equals this. Perfect. Now, here's where the magic really happens. So this is where we're going to do the multi-calling. So we're going to say brownie dot multi-call. And here's where we have to actually, here's where we have to pick that address. So we're going to say address equals, and we're going to pop in the multi-call address. If we just look up like etherscan, multi-call etherscan, uh, we actually do get a couple of multi-calls in here, um, but I'm going to use the Uniswap one. So I'm going to paste that in here. This is the multi-call, multi-call v3, uh, multi Uniswap v3 multi-call two. This is exactly the code that I want to use. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to copy this address. I'm going to say address equals this and this. Oh, and we need to import Brownie as well. Import Brownie. Oh, actually. Multi call. Let's do that. This way we're defining, hey, whenever you work with making these multi calls, you're going to be using this contract and this, this function right here to do our multi call, right? That's it. Like, and if uh, Brownie has some other cool tools, like you can deploy a multi call to any chain. Um, so if you don't have it defined, you can go ahead and de deploy one yourself. Brownie has a built in, which is awesome. Now that we've defined the address that we want to work with, we can do with Brownie dot, or excuse me, with multi call. Uh, and we can loop through all these rounds and in one call, we can go ahead and get all the last 50 round updates. So we can say for round ID in range, latest round, latest round minus 50. And we'll do minus one. So we're gonna say round data equals price feed dot get round data, passing in the round ID and then rounds dot append round data, just like that. So we're looping through, we're starting from the latest round and we're going back one round at a time, all the way to 50 rounds ago. And we're just adding all this round data to our, our rounds object here. And then at the end here, we're just gonna say print rounds. So in order to do this, um, you of course need 
you're gonna need your Infura key for this uh, to work with this. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're unfamiliar on how to work with Brownie, there's some install instructions um, in the readme and everything. So to run this, we're gonna do Brownie, run scripts, multi-call, dash dash network, mainnet. Or you could do mainnet fork. And I'll, it gives us this massive response in a single API call. So we did it successfully. This is great. Now this by itself isn't that cool. In fact, this is kind of lame. It's uh, just a whole bunch of nothing. Let's let's cool that. Let's make this a little cooler, right? Let's let's do something with this data. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna spice this up for us now. We're gonna create a new file called multi call multi call plot.py. And what we're gonna do in this script. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna call the last 50 rounds, chain link price feed in one call, and then plot it on a, on a little graph. So I'm gonna copy this, this whole thing. I'm gonna paste it over here. And, uh, and we're gonna make a couple of modifications to this guy. Um, uh, in, my, in my GitHub repo, I've even made this even more cooler. I've uh, parameterized like some of these, these out as well. Um, I'm not gonna do that here, but uh, but you could absolutely do that. So, but in any case, so let's let's go ahead and, and plot this on a graph, right? So we're gonna so these are all the the rounds of uh, the chain link price feed updates. So we're gonna turn this into a graph so we can actually basically visualize and recreate. Um, if we go to and recreate this graph basically for our own UI purposes or or Pythonic purposes or really whatever we want to do. So all we're gonna do is in our with multi-call, we're gonna do more stuff. <laughs> we're gonna do more more cool stuff. So we have uh, rounds, we're gonna change this to round IDs. We're gonna have an answers uh, array. And we're gonna do timestamps. So we're gonna plot the answers on the y-axis and the timestamps on the x-axis. So we don't even need round IDs actually. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, let's do this. So we're gonna do, instead of rounds.append, we're gonna do answers.append round data. And again, we know that if we look at our interface, round data of one is gonna be our answer, right? Because zero, one, and yeah, that's the answer. So round data of one, answers.append round data. And we'll do timestamps.append uh, we could do round data of three here, oops, of three, right? Because, oops, uh, zero, one, two, three, this is when it was updated, but in, but that'll give us a really weird number that we won't really know how to work with. So we're gonna turn it into a, uh, a timestamp. So we're gonna import date time. So right at the top, we're gonna do from date time, import date time. So we're gonna say uh, date time dot from timestamp round data free three like that. Boom, cool. And now we're gonna do something super spicy. So we're gonna use with this this Python library called matplotlib, right? If you haven't worked with this before, you should. It's awesome. It's for like plotting stuff real quickly, right? Yeah, you can read more about it here. Now, since I've installed Brownie with pipx. I can't just uh, do pip install matplotlib, like normally I would just do pip install matplotlib and we'd be good to go. But since I installed it with pipx, this means that Brownie's running in its like own virtual environment. So I need to inject matplotlib into the, the fbrownie virtual environment. So the way I do that is I do pipx inject fbrownie with matplotlib. That's why I go ahead and do that. I've already done it, but I guess I'm gonna do it again. You might have to restart your uh, your terminal after that. But once we've injected it, we can then do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then I can do some really spicy stuff down here. We'll do plt.plot, we'll plot timestamps on the x-axis, answers on the y-axis, we'll do plt.show, and now we can do Brownie run scripts, multi-call plot 
Pi dash dash network mainnet. And let's see what happens. Ta-da! We get this little plot of the last 50 updates of that feed, which is really cool. So we can see actually it's been less than 24 hours and uh, here are the prices on, over here and here's the days and it looks like ETH has been going up for the past 50 Chainlink price feed rounds. So boom, there you go. So the tattoo is finalized. This is what I'm getting. I'm getting it scheduled. We do have a DAO proposal in right now uh, to ask whether or not it has to be exactly this pixelated version or it could be like an interpreted version. I don't know. We're finding that out. If it has to be that exact version, then great. I'm going to have just a bunch of pixels somewhere on my body. Cool. Honestly, thank you to all the people who, who jumped in and, and decided to join the fun. That, that was a, I'm, I'm flattered that people wanted to leave it a permanent impression on me. So that's, uh, that's great. Again, this is an experimental DAO and uh, it seems like the first part Worked really well. Now I, all I gotta do is get the tattoo and then we'll do the optimistic oracle piece and that'll be really exciting. So tattoo is being scheduled. Keep you guys updated.